I love the Jedi and I love the whole Star Wars universe. But if there's one thing that Luke Skywalker knows, it's that the Jedi must end. And I think I agree with him. And welcome back to the heart of the stories we tell. I'm Rob the Host, and this is another look deep into what makes a story a story. A theory on storytelling by a storyteller who believes that every story has merit. And tonight's episode is... The Idea and Philosophy of Being a Jedi, and How It's Changed Over the Years. There are a lot of cute little jokes you can make about the fact that Star Wars wasn't fully put together as one whole story. And of course, the fact that Disney now owns it and is obviously trying to market it means that there are little things that are going to slip by here and there. There's a lot we could talk about. But first, I really want to talk about what makes a Jedi a Jedi. And if you think about it, there's a lot of actual real philosophy George Lucas used to create this universe. Of course, if you like this and other videos, subscribe to my channel because I get the feeling we're going to be talking about this sort of thing a lot. And of course, there's lots of things we can go into. But I guess I have to throw this up here, although I'm not sure why. So once again, it's stop. Spoiler time. Bah, da, na, na. So let me start by saying that I've read all the old canon stories, even though... I haven't caught up with all the new ones, and as far as I'm concerned, Luke Skywalker was never the last Jedi. He was the first Jedi, the first of a new order of Jedi. Because you see, in old canon, things didn't continue to work the way they were in the Old Republic once Luke took over. Now in a second or two we're going to talk about that old canon, because it's the thing I know the most about. However, first let's talk about something that's been brought into the new canon. The idea of Grey Force users. And there's a couple of them. Most people are probably going to call it the Grey Jedi, or the Users of the Way. These two quotes have both popped up in, in current Disney canon discussions in novels. And as such, this symbol that we see in the trailer, that symbol right there, probably means we're going to get a lot of Grey Jedi references. We already have met a user of the Force that isn't a Jedi in the prequel, and now, as you see, I get the feeling we're going to meet more. And the kid's cartoon, Star Wars Rebels, didn't disappoint when he introduced Bendu. Bendu is a creature that is not a Jedi or a Sith. He uses and lives with the Force, and considers himself above the whole idea of light and dark. Now, we've seen this before in villains, and of course the Grey Jedi as heroes. But there's a lot to talk about about this, and where the Jedi went wrong... Anyone who's watched the prequels know that it isn't exactly the best series of films. But it does point out why the Jedi were failing. And I think that over the years a lot of writers have realized this. I could spend a whole episode just talking about the good and the bad. In fact, I rated them in one of my Sensational Seven last year. But at the end of the day, all the way from Phantom Menace through Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, we get to see exactly what's going on with the Jedi. And I'll point it blank say. It's not good. Lucas really made a samurai story in space. That's what the Jedi are. Well, it's a bunch of Western philosophy intermixed with Eastern philosophies, but when you really think about it, it's all about denial. Now, I've heard a lot of people that talk about how it's Buddhism, it's Taoism, it's thisism, it's thatism, and you know what? I still insist it's all a mix. The main part is this. The idea of trying to become almost an inhuman robot. Mixed with oversimplifying good emotion and bad emotion and light and dark. And let's be honest, as I said last week in a post-Game of Thrones world, we're not really ready for just light and dark anymore. Now, that doesn't say that we can't have some comedy along the way. And a little bit of, well, of course, that guy's the bad guy. But let's take a look at what we actually learn about the Jedi and the Force in each of the movies, because the movies are the absolute most canon, the canon shared between old and new. Let's start at the beginning, the fourth movie. We actually don't learn a lot of, about the Jedi in this one. We learn that they were an ancient order. They're not exactly peaceful, since we know that Obi-Wan was a general in a war and fought in the Clone Wars. We also learn that they fight with lightsabers, which are glorified swords, let's be honest. We learn that they have some form of telepathy, because they can influence weak minds. But they also have some form of precognitive and enhanced senses. They were guardians and counselors before the Dark Age. 
Sounds a lot like a samurai. A little bit of feudalism thrown in, a little bit of martial arts, hey, we have this and that going, but not that much. And honestly, Luke's shot at the end was mostly just enhanced senses. So, that goes on to the fifth movie. Now, Empire changes it up a bit. Not only do they have enhanced senses, but now they have telekinesis, the ability to affect the outside world. We also get the big reveal that Vader is Luke's father. Now, we already knew that the Force could run in families, that there was some form of genetic component to this, so that isn't that big of a deal. But we also get Yoda, and Yoda teaches things that are much more Western philosophy. There is no spoon. Size doesn't matter. You can do anything. You just have to unlearn what you learned. And a 21-year-old Luke is too old to begin the training. And that always made sense in my mind. You probably want, like, a teenager, maybe even a preteen, someone that doesn't have preconceived notions about the world. Probably the best case scenario would be get, like, an 11 or 12-year-old in for Jedi training. Have him do some philosophy, some basic force work, and then lightsaber training when he becomes a teen. But we've already started to get the whole, don't go to your friends, you can't trust your thoughts, that the darkness you bring is the darkness that you will face. And you know what? We already have dark emotions. Anger leads to fear, or fear leads to anger. Anger leads to the dark side. Well, you know what? Fear of losing someone can make you do good things. Anger, when righteous, can do good things. I never fully got behind this level of change. And then came the third movie, or the sixth movie, Jedi. Jedi is our first real look at what a fully-fledged Jedi Knight would look like, or at least what we thought one would. Luke Skywalker has to put aside all of his anger, his fear, all of it, and just stand up to the Emperor and say, No, I'm a Jedi, like my father before me. No real powers or change in the philosophy is introduced. But we just expand on them all a little bit. Logic within movie, though. There's one thing I always wondered, and I'm curious if any of you ever thought of it. There's this great scene where Palpatine wants Luke to strike him down with the lightsaber. Isn't the right answer in that case, take a calm, cool, cleansing breath, force push Dad out of the way, strike the Emperor with my lightsaber, not in anger, not in passion, but just in calm, cool, the galaxy is definitely better off without this guy. I mean, we already know Luke is willing to kill, he has before in this, hell, he blew up the whole Death Star. And isn't this a defense of others and defense of self at this point? And if it's only the emotional impact that's the problem? Well, alright, sorry. Let me know down in the comment section what you think about that little conundrum. Meanwhile, I'm going to move on to the second set of movies, the prequels, and episode one. Phantom Menace introduces Metachlorians, not exactly everyone's favorite Star Wars topic. But it also introduces the idea of the old Jedi Knights. I'm going to talk about Metachlorians when I talk about old continuity in a second, but the big part is that it introduces the idea that Anakin's already too old to begin the training. He's somewhere between 8 and 10 years old. Wasn't that where I thought would have been perfect up top? Yeah, I did. We do also get the phrase, you must have a Jedi's reflexes, which, again, matches up pretty closely with what we saw with Luke. But then we get the fact that they're not generals. They're not soldiers. In fact, they even say, I can protect you or advise you, but I cannot fight a war for you. All of a sudden, these guys are less samurai and more old-school scholars. And that's cool and all, just doesn't quite fit exactly with everything we've heard. But when we move into Attack of the Clones, which we will right now, that changes. Episode 2, we talk more about the idea of Sith stuff, really. But we see what a trained Anakin looks like, and we get more of an idea of what the Jedi do day to day. They go out on these missions, they protect people, they do little tiny errand work for the New Republic. In fact, it seems so pedestrian and mundane, it almost, it almost makes it cheap. But again, we get the whole idea that you have to let go, and we even get told the phrase, Jedi are not allowed to love. Er, wait a second, didn't we already establish that the Force runs in family lines, and that you should be training people young? Wouldn't the best scenario be to have two Jedi who fall in love, have kids, and train from a young age? No, alright. Common sense wasn't 
exactly come, and in the Jedi Order, I guess, so. Alright, we also get introduced to the idea of the Jedi Council, and the fact that their powers are waning. Now, of course, later we find out that's Sidious. But let's talk about Revenge of the Sith for a second. The best of the prequels, because we get so much action, and so many cool lightsaber fights, but also the one that, ugh, drives me nuts with the entire idea of dropped plot lines. You really need the Clone Wars TV series to fill in a lot of the blanks, and the fact is, is that we still see the same robotic problem. And the problem is, is that Jedi aren't human. The tragedy of the fall of Anakin Skywalker isn't that he's some supervillain. It's the fact that he's a kid who's manipulated because he doesn't know what hormones are, and because he wasn't allowed to be a normal person. He was held to this rigorous thing, and it just didn't work. In fact, if it weren't Anakin, it would have been easily someone. I totally understand watching especially Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. Why Jedi fall? Dooku is a perfect example, trying to do right and falling. But with that, we're going to switch to why I think the Jedi need to end. And it goes back into the old canon. Because you see, Luke Skywalker had a whole Jedi Academy back then, too, in a series of books written by Kevin Anderson. And to touch on those is to touch on an entire set of things that are not canon, but give you an idea into thought processes. This trilogy did something that no other trilogy had done before, in my mind. And years after I read it, when I saw the prequels, I felt even more strongly that Kevin Anderson's version of the Jedi were a much better school, a much better idea. Now, in Empire's End, a comic book series that takes place around the same time, Luke has a vision, and in that vision he sees the three children of Han and Leia leading a Republic force. Now, this never happens because the Yuuzhan Wong come, but the series that talks about them training is called Young Jedi Knights. And it's also written by Anderson and his wife. And then there's a very young kid's version, Junior Jedi Knights. And all of them tell the story of how he deals with Jedi very differently than the Council did in the prequels. This still isn't Grey Jedi. This is still Light Side Jedi. But the kids, Anakin specifically, is treated more like a summer camp. You come, you learn some force tricks, you learn to control your emotions. And the teenagers, the Young Jedi Knight series, is more like a sleepaway school. Like they're going to a school that's a private school. And at the same time, they're still allowed to love and have families and have friendships. Because all those psychological things that we do so well in the real world, Kevin Anderson realized at the same time needed to be done for these kids. And at the end of the day, his Jedi were more human for it. Now, I think that this same concept that was done then is going to be done now. I think that instead of these kids, we're going to see that Luke wants Rey to be the first of a new type of Jedi. Now think back to the trailer. Rey can see the light and the darkness and the balance. And we see that emblem which may or may not be the Book of the Way, which may or may not be the Grey Jedi. And Luke says the Jedi must end. But I think what they really want is to start a new order and have Rey be the first of them. And part of the reason why they flushed the old canon is because it was too much for moviegoers to be expected to read 30-odd books, 50-odd books. So with this, they could take all those old stories of Luke with an academy and change it to Rey with an academy, Take all the old stories of all those things the other heroes did and move them to the new heroes. Now, there's some good and there's some bad with that. But at the end of the day, I think it might just reinvigorate this franchise. And let's be honest, it's already a huge one. What do you think? What do you think the pros and cons are on this? What do you think should the Jedi end? Do you think we need a more modern look? Let me know down in the comment sections. And if you want to see more Star Wars stuff, smash that like button, share this video to help me get this up there. And of course, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Because I'm going to be t looking into a whole bunch of things. Game of Thrones, Star Wars, comic books, novels, you name it. As we take a walk through the heart of all of the stories we tell. Have a good night, and may the Force be with you.